He was famously recorded to have said, Nous préférons la liberté dans la pauvreté. <laughs> what is the line? Let's talk about Sekuture. So the year is 1958. The whole of West Africa is under the hypnosis of the French, the English and the Portuguese. The Republic of Guinea as part of the old French West African Federation. Now somewhere around this time the French under General Charles de Gaulle come to realize that they can no longer contain the resistance from their North and West African colonies. Hence they decide to hold a referendum with their West African colonies. They were given two options. Yes, to accept inferior membership of the newly established French community and continue receiving financial and technical aid or no, to gain immediate independence, but be stripped of all forms of French aid. And so it was held on the 28th of September, 1958. All of France's West African colonies had voted to remain under French rulership, except for the Republic of Guinea, whose population had strongly and overwhelmingly voted in favor of independence. Four days later, on the 2nd of October, 2 October, Guinea was declared an independent state with Sekuture as its founding president. Now, obviously, this didn't sit well with the French, especially since Sekuture, according to reports, was early on believed to be in favor of the French community proposal. They didn't think an African country at that point in time would have the audacity, let alone capacity, to vote for a separation. But hey, it happened. And like all bad separations, the French quickly withdrew all their resources from the Republic, leaving Seku and his people broke on so many levels. So what the Guineans do? Well, they turn to the communist bloc. The Russians, the Chinese, as well as their African neighbors, Ghana. Long story short, with major assistance from the international community, Seku and his people had managed to fend off the socio-economic pressures from their resentful colonizers. This move was said to spark the revolution that led other French colonies in the region to fight for independence in the years that followed. And voila, there you have it. An example of how effective leadership changed the political landscape of a whole region. You're probably wondering, who was this Sekuture? Or as he himself put it, qui est cet homme? Well, pour vous mettre à l'aise, cet homme est un fils de la Guinée. He is the child of Guinea, born and raised in the town in central Guinea called Farana. His dad and his mom from the Malinke tribe. He was the great grandson of somebody today who I'm gonna do an episode on in the future, don't worry. <laughs> now the Farana born and bred's disruptive moves could be seen from an early age. From being expelled from school at just 15 for organizing a student strike to spending some time in jail at the age of 25, it's safe to say that he wasn't afraid to voice his opinion. During the build-up to his presidency, he held the post of Secretary General in various organizations, including the General Confederation of Workers, which is a national trade union, and the Democratic Party of Guinea, which was Guinea's branch of the regional political organization known as Rassemblement Démocratique Africain, or the African Democratic Assembly, which played a significant role in the country obtaining its independence. Now, President Sekou Toure had quite a number of notable legacies. For instance, discontent with the rights workers were being given, he helped found an independent trade union called La Confédération Générale du Travail Africain, which was so effective that the existing national trade union ended up joining forces with it. Also, he spotlighted the rich West African heritage by bringing them to grand theaters to be displayed before audiences that would otherwise not be exposed to such exquisite cultural manifestations. This was said to attract new audiences, as well as bring about a new genre of music that fused between the more West African sounds with those produced by Europeans and other cultures. Moreover, he paved the way for females to attend universities and they have to join the workforce. These were just some of the many great things that could be said about the man that was known for his ability to articulate his ideas effectively and maintain composure when addressing the toughest crowds. Obviously, he wasn't perfect. He had his fair share of flaws, miscalculations, and wrongdoings. For example, in 1968, he effected a cultural revolution under which he mainly did two things. Firstly, replaced the state language of French in primary and middle schools with the seven most spoken native languages in the country because he believed that every child should be fluent and educated in their mother tongue. 
Secondly, he substituted a lot of school assignments for vocational training, mainly to inculcate agricultural skills in students. Now, the problem with this revolution was that while you had parents working as farmers in rural areas of the country and sending their kids to middle schools in the cities for them to acquire new knowledge, not only were their kids coming back with a poor command of the state and university language, i.e. French, they were being taught farming skills that they could have learned back in the villages anyways. Now, some writers have referred to the kids that grew up during this period as the lost generation. Ouch. Other things have also been documented. For example, he imposed radical socialist policies that at times involved exploiting the labor of farmers in rural areas of the country for the benefit of those living in towns and cities. In addition, he remained in power for 26 years, during which time his political party was the sole legally recognized party. This had to mean that he was silencing his opposition. Yes, these major events were not minor blows to his legacy. This sure as hell ain't an attempt to marginalize the plight of those that were oppressed under his rulership. No doubt some were. But we must acknowledge the fact that this was a man who not only played a vital role in leading his country to independence, but a man who stood as a proud pan-Africanist that relentlessly fought to uplift his people and form meaningful ties with other African nations. Which at the very least tells us that he had his people's best interest at heart. And of course we can't forget that behind all great leaders, are phenomenal personalities, whether known to us or not. As mentioned earlier, it was said that Sekouture had actually leaned towards the French community idea at first, but that it was his own affiliates as well as leading union members that had convinced him otherwise. Similarly, when the French had stripped Guinea of all forms of aid, it was the likes of Ghanaian president Kwame Nkrumah that had offered Guinea a loan of 10 million pounds. So as Guineans, we owe a great debt of gratitude to all those that offered a helping hand when it was needed the most. Based on this reality, one would be justified in regarding Sekou Toure as a prime example of an African leader who despite all the odds being stacked against him, was willing to gamble the future of his country because he was convinced that independence, more accurately, self-determination was the only way forward for Africans. He was famously recorded to have said, Nous préférons la liberté dans la pauvreté à la richesse dans l'esclavage, which basically translates to we prefer liberty in poverty to riches in slavery. His usage of the pronoun we signifies that he was not alone in his struggle. Neither should you and I be. But at times we do have to take a stance or be willing to adjust our stances even when the position seems too consequential. And I'm sure there are a plethora of other African leaders in the continent that epitomize this idea. So do tell us in the comments below who you think are some of these African personalities, dead or alive, that have left the legacy so intriguing that you think we just gotta do an episode on in one of these upcoming videos. Until then, always remember. Adibe. <laughs>